hey guys, I just want to throw some more things at you really quick concerning the resurrection and how, you know, I think that the, the coming of the Lord, for the most part, at least if not every time, is speaking of the moment of death. And, you know, I've said that First Thessalonians 4 and, and Corinthians, they don't teach this idea of the rapture, that Christ will come and, uh, you know, <clears throat> take believers who are still alive to heaven without having to face death, basically. Basically, where people get mixed up, I think, about the rapture, and I did myself. Jesus is talking about the resurrection, which happens at death. Okay. Uh, that's when the, the dead are raised incorruptible. That's when, you know, this mortal puts on immortality. And, you know, an interesting verse, too, or passage is, you know, John 14, 1, where Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So see, Jesus says right here, I will come again. I will come to you. Okay, and uh, so that's why I also think, you know, when it says the coming of the Lord, this is talking at death. Are you, is somebody going to say this doesn't happen at death? The, that, um, you know, he said that where I am, there ye may be also. What did Paul say? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay, so could this somehow not be referring to the moment of death? No, I think that it definitely is. And so we look at First Thessalonians 4 again, where he says, you know, we which are alive and remain unto what? The coming of the Lord. Okay, and I said that remaining doesn't remain, remain alive. It means remain in the faith. And so Paul is saying, uh, in contrast to the dead in Christ who are already dead, and, you know, their physical bodies are dead, but they're alive with Christ. And he says, we who are alive physically and, you know, are believers who remain in Christ until the moment of death, until the coming of the Lord, okay, then we will be resurrected as well, uh, you know, and here at the kingdom and be with those brothers and sisters who are already deceased, already with the Lord. We will not prevent them. We will not go before them. We will not anticipate them. They will be there already. But, so I just read some um, stuff from a preterist website saying how the coming of the Lord is uh, the moment of death. And I thought there's some really good articles, and there's more on there that I'd finished reading that are really good. And one of them talks about how the day of Christ is also like the moment of death. And so I'll probably read some of those tomorrow, but I'd encourage you to check those out yourself. And then I mentioned this uh, article on Rapture Ready by Thomas Ice, I think. He's a big, huge pre-trib guy. And so he's trying to refute the idea here that the coming of the Lord is the moment of death. And I think he does a horrible job. And uh, so it just makes me even more secure in what I'm seeing and teaching here now. And one thing is he creates pretty much like a straw man because he says, see, um, let me think, what was I looking at? I want to go back to that passage in John. I don't remember where it was. John 14. Okay. I might want to go back to that. But I think that Thomas Ice creates a straw man because he says, well, for one thing, if we look at these verses that talk about the coming of the Lord, and if, if we replace coming of the Lord with death, or if we replace Jesus with death, then it sounds absurd, it doesn't work, or whatever. Well, that's a straw man argument. But sometimes it does work when we replace the coming of the Lord with death. And um, and I want to show that too, how he kind of like exposes his own uh, self here. But, you know... So, like, his argument would be something like this, like, I said that this happens at the moment of death when Jesus said, you know, I go prepare a place for you, I come again. Um, so he would say something like, I, and if I go and prepare a place for you, uh, death will come, 
and uh, receive you unto myself. Uh, which, I mean, kind of works still, but... I mean, I don't know. I can't explain it. He just He's playing, like, word games, and he's really just making a straw man, okay? <laughs> Anyways, but I want to point out some things in this. See, here he says, Revelation 1-7, Behold, he, and then he puts death there, cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. And uh, so he thinks that this this passage in Revelation one seventeen is the rapture. Okay, and some might think that it's the second coming where Christ is coming to rule and reign on the earth. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this verse. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Well, the clouds can be symbolic of certain things. They can be symbolic of judgment, you know, or... Uh, I think judgment might be one of the main ones that it's symbolic of, maybe like glory or something. Um, also, but I think that this verse, without even looking into it much, it says, every eye shall see him. That makes me think of just this general idea that everyone will be judged by Jesus. Okay, at, at the end of history, or at the end of time, um, everyone will have been judged by Jesus. Every eye shall see him, okay, for who he is, Lord of all. Um, you know, he is God. And But anyways, I want to show you this. <laughs> and see, for, for our conversation is in heaven, for whence also we look for death, Philippians 3.20. Well, like Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present for the Lord. So as Christians, you know, we look forward to being with the Lord. It's not so much that we look forward to being with death or to being to being dead, you know, because we're going to be having eternal life. So we're looking forward to that. And, you know, that comes on the other side of that, basically. So, But here's one that's really interesting, though. He says, it's not admissible to say. Okay, and so here's like a straw man. Again, like, for death himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Okay. No, in First Thessalonians 4, when it says that the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, I'd say that's what happens after death. Okay, and then the, the, the dead person is resurrected. Okay, so what what's he trying to prove here by saying by try trying to replace you know Jesus with death? It's like no, this event happens right immediately after death. Like his this isn't an argument, but this is worse. It says neither is it admissible to say, "Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour death doth come." Matthew twenty four forty two. So it's not admissible to say, "Watch for ye know not what hour death." Doth come really, because I always thought that death could happen in an instant. So I think that's perfectly admissible to say. I mean, you know, this is ridiculous. I mean, that's a verse that that really proves the point that what he's speaking of is death. Okay. So he replaced, you know, not what hour your Lord doth come, but the idea is that, you know, at death is the Lord coming. For the person's soul, basically. And I also think it's interesting, too, there's a parable where Jesus says, like, there was somebody who was unprepared or something, or he was too concerned about his riches or something, and Jesus says, you know, thou fool, you know, today I required you of you your soul. And, you know, so that we know that's like speaking of death, okay? Um, so, anyways... I guess that's all I'm going to share right now. But I totally do think that a lot of this, the second coming, if not all of it, is what happens at the moment of death. And that still leaves a lot of questions about Daniel's 70th week and Revelation, the Millennial Kingdom, and all that stuff. I know, I understand that. But, you know, we really have to tread lightly on that. I'm learning more and more that, you know, it can be interpreted totally different ways than most people teach and so it just takes a lot of 
praying and, and studying and considering different things. But, you know, Revelation is a very symbolic book. It could be way more symbolic than we can even, uh, you know, think normally. So, a lot of it has to be looked into, but... Anyways... God bless, guys.